Hello all, this is Pastor Kurt Lunsford from New Life Community Church of the Nazarene. And the question that is burning on everybody's mind at this point in time is when are we at New Life Community Church of the Nazarene going to be reopening our doors for worship services? And I wanted to um, just talk with you for a minute and let you know where we are on that process. And the bottom line is, we don't know when we are going to actually open the doors for worship services. I am aware that other churches are opening their doors, and I am grateful that they are. I am praying for them that they will continue to hear from and follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. And I am trusting that they are taking the reasonable precautions that they should take so that they can keep their congregations healthy in the midst of this. Where we are as a church board, we met on Monday night and we decided together with a lot of input from me that we would not open our church board, our church doors for a little while because we have a very at-risk community that we serve. We have a lot of people in our congregation that are over 65 years of age. We have many people that have underlying health conditions, even our younger population. And it's just not wise at this point. Now, when I say not wise, please do know that I'm not just making a rational decision or one out of fear or trying to be overly cautious. I've been praying. I've been seeking God. The message that he gave me today is that you don't always get to do what you want to do. From David's life and from Paul's life. There, there are times when we want to do something and we think it's the right thing to do, but we don't get to do it because God has his voice and we listen to him and we say what he wants us to do. So I just want to let you know, this brief update is to let you know that we are not opening our doors at this point in time. I am paying close attention to what happens to the general population as we come back together and as we engage. A couple of things you should know. First of all, 60% of the cases that have been um, verified as having COVID-19 and random tests, 60% of those people didn't even know they were asymptomatic. They had no symptoms at all. So it's quite possible that there's someone who is carrying the disease who feels perfectly healthy and normal. And so that's one factor behind it. The other factor is that this, this epidemic is not past us at this point. If I look at the Arizona Department of Health Services data dashboard, and I look at the number of positive or suspected COVID-19 patients that are seen in the emergency department. And I'm looking at that one specifically because that's the front line. That's where they would go first. What we see is that that number is escalating. It's a day by day number. And since the governor has opened everything back up, the number is going up again. More people are being infected, which I would expect. And I'm not saying the governor has done something wrong. I absolutely believe that he's done the right thing. We need to re-engage and keep our economy going. There's a false dichotomy between saving lives and keeping the economy going. They're both important because if we don't keep the economy going, people are going to be losing their lives from other things. If we don't get the hospitals open and people getting surgeries that they need, they're going to lose their lives for other reasons. If we don't have an economy going and people aren't working, then they don't have health insurance. And if they don't have health insurance, they won't go to the hospital for things that they need to go to the hospital for and will lose lives. So it's not, you can't say, 
that you know I'm I'm for saving lives and if you're you know for opening up business then you're just about money that's that's a false notion and I just want you to know that so we are paying attention to all of the advice that's been given we have been told the other reason that we are not going to open our doors right now is that if we do open our doors we still need to keep that 10 uh, that um, 10 groups of people or six feet apart we need to try and space everybody out family groups separated six feet apart everybody wearing face masks everybody using hand sanitizer all of those kinds of things and that doesn't feel like worship to me we've even been told that it would be wise not to sing or not to sing as much because singing spreads the the covid virus faster well that's not very worshipful i i believe that we can actually worship better online or through the other means than we can by opening our doors at this point in time so i'm encouraging you to worship I would encourage you, if there's a small group of people around you that you can invite into your home and have a small group, nicely spaced, that can watch the worship service together, I'd encourage you to do that. Just remember to be cautious. Remember to take precautions. Wash your hands. Practice good hygiene. If you're sick at all, stay home. All those kinds of things that we've been hearing over and over ad nauseum. And there's one final factor. I, ha I have been very much involved with some pastors on the Navajo Nation. And at the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic, before the um, government regulations, before any anything came out saying that you shouldn't meet, they ended up having a group meeting of about 100 to maybe 125 people. And they fellowship together, they ate together, they hugged on each other, they loved each other. And out of that, two pastors are now dead. Several other pastors have been in the hospital for many weeks. Many of their congregation have been in the hospital for weeks on end and some have passed away. And it has spread through the reservation from that one meeting, and those pastors have even received death threats. We have a fragile, at-risk community that we minister to. And my job as pastor is to put your needs ahead of my needs. And I believe I can best do that by keeping the doors closed until we can come together with more of a sense that we're going to be healthy and okay. I want you to be able to love on each other. I want to give hugs to you all. I want to be together. But right now, God is telling me it's just not the right time. So please know I am praying. The church board is praying. We are praying for everyone. We. The other thing that I really want to encourage you about is this is this is a time to practice charity and grace and mercy and love. I am not in any way saying that any pastor who chooses to open the doors of their church right now is making a mistake. That's their decision and God is leading them. And they have different circumstances. Every congregation is unique. Every situation and circumstance is unique. We are making this decision because we feel it's the right thing for us. I'll come back when I know more, and I look forward to a great reunion someday soon here on earth, not in heaven, okay? I'm looking forward to getting together again and having wonderful fellowship and worship with you all. In the meantime, stay tuned, watch live on YouTube, uh, call, write cards, encourage one another. Be diligent in thinking about and praying for others. And please pray for me that I would have the wisdom I need to lead in this time. Thank you and God bless.